Good morning, folks. The train of jam-packed news continues today with severe weather, Earth's history, climate science, and a good bit in deep space. Let's go to spaceweathernews.com. We're finding the last 24 hours on our star. Primary feature of note is the coronal hole, sort of taking over the disk from our perspective here. You'll recall we entered the stream from the previous coronal hole on Saturday, and that has continued today, but almost the entire stream has been sub-500 kilometers per second flow. We got but a slice of instability in the magnetic shield of Earth, no storm conditions. Earth should be magnetically connecting to this coronal hole today. Its solar wind should arrive towards the end of the week. Want to quickly jump over to New Zealand. It's the same storm that made news across Australia the last few days. As aesthetically outstanding as some of the shots are, the reality was that power outages, hail, flight delays, and flash flooding included the rainiest one hour in Auckland history. Up next, big news out of LIGO, and here is where Electric and Plasma Universe fans need to pay attention. The catalog of gravitational waves on official record now includes four new ones, while these just nascent observations are with much speculation and assumption, they are indeed observations. For the same reason that a fan of plasmoid galactic centers should never ignore observations of active galactic nuclei just because the words black hole are in the title, is the same reason why these observations must be interpreted from the standpoint of your preferred paradigm and not simply ignored. It just so happens that such explanations drill more down into the nature of the colliding objects, or whether it's a collision at all, and that is where half of the future understanding will come. The other half will be a function of continued observations of the leftovers, whose characterization will aid substantially in the former. Up next, we've got observations of binary star systems. Turns out that at least a third of the systems likely violate the gravitational formation model of their dynamics in favor of turbulence in the preceding clouds that formed them. Nice. NASA has arrived at Bennu. OSIRIS-REx is literally about to bounce off of the asteroid and fly all the way back to Earth for a return sample. Interesting piece out of Harvard next on a potentially new piece of the life puzzle. Turns out that the RNA molecules first seen on this planet may have used a different compound in the recipe until the modern formula could be woven into the mix. Quick reminder, all these daily stories are linked for you below the video. We've got 104 new exoplanets discovered and here they are. Sizes and temperatures on the left with the scale. As they come on the screen, they were discovered in the timeline top right. There are many planets with orbits less than 24 hours, that's their entire year in less than our day. There are numerous multi-planet systems that have been discovered. A significant portion are terrestrial, meaning they are less than twice the size of Earth. And most interestingly, all 104 have orbits much smaller than Mercury, which is shown on the right side, and that's despite six or seven Jupiter-sized planets. Last but not least, in a major study on crop risk in Europe, scientists have discovered the risks of frost are coming later and later into the spring. These ultra-late cold blasts are becoming more common and are the result of global warming. Did you catch that? In about 10 weeks, one of the many presentations at Observing the Frontier, one born of frustration with articles like that, promises to demonstrate a flaw in every single existing climate study. It's my promise. We've got your wind maps followed by shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.